Come to hear Claude Debussy. I'm trotting out my finest stuff for the for the last services, but well, as long as you're here, let's hear it. That's one of the finest ones. Hey. Thank you. 
Thank you.
Let's see. Uh, this is my time uh, for to share this with you. Um, yes. The, uh, yeah. Because of the uh, next week's your annual meeting, uh, and Michael asked me to switch the wedding. Uh, so I will go over to his church uh, to lead the worship service next Sunday. And then Michael will come over to lead the worship service next week here, and followed by your annual meeting. So I've been now grateful uh, for the last you know, about three, four months with you. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you. And as I talk to the uh, Reverend Jinu in Calgary, and I haven't informed who you are closing, but it looks like I'm worshiping with you. And you want know, me to say hello to you guys. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> I still want to be aware of this condition. I will not improve. Yeah. You had a heart episode. When? It's the uh, September. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, it, it, it's, it's much better. So, uh, yeah, I have not this. It's able to go back to worship and, and, uh, for January. So, uh, I've talked to him since Christmas, but yeah, he's like, uh, okay. Okay, um, anything else regarding the uh, announcement we want to hear? No? Okay. So if there's no more announcements, so let us worship God. With the call to worship. Before we were born, God knew us. God searches out our path and tracks us along our way. So we praise God, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is nowhere we can go where God is not with us. Stillness when we are frantic, your truth when we are perplexed. You give us freedom when fear takes hold. You send light when we have lost our way. You are love when we feel longing and empty. You give us energy when we are ready to reject. We praise you, God, for all that you are and all that you have been all that you will give for us. In our worship, we offer you our love and loyalty, here and now, now and always. In your son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Lesson number 338, let all things now Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Response readings from Psalm 139, verse 1 to 6 and 13 to 18. O Lord, ye have searched me and known me. You search on my path and my lying down, and I've pointed you all my ways. You have me in. Behind and before, and lay your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You did me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, for I know very well. My friend was not here from you. And was being made a secret, and typically woven in the depths of the earth. How we to me are your thoughts of God, how blessed you are so For testimonies from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 to 13. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord at the end of Eli, and the word of the Lord was greater in those days. Reasons were not widespread. At that time, Eli, his eyesight did not control him so they could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet fallen out, and Samuel was laying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, will you call me? But he said, I do not call. I died again. So he went and lay down. 
the Lord called the king Samuel and said, I'm going to go back to Eli and said, Here I am, will you call me? But he said, I do not call my son, my young king. Now Samuel did not yet know to the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, will you call me? Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if it calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 to 12 to 20. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Good is man for the stomach, and the stomach for food. And thou wilt destroy both one and the other. The God is man not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God made the Lord, and he also raised the son's power. Do you not know your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make the members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two will share in one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. After sin, the person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you know, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? which ye have from God, and that you are not your own. For you are God with a key price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. And that's for reading it from John, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 3, 43 to 51. The next day, he just decided to go to Galilee. He found Pele, he said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found that Daniel and Zachary, they found him about whom Moses in the law, and also the prophets wrote to the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Now Daniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw that Daniel coming toward him, he said of him, Give it truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Then Daniel asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Daniel replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very surely, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The word of God for the people of God. When I first worship at St. Andrew's Lunenburg and Rose Bay, Notice that people are kind of sit back from the pew. So, kind of wonder, some people are sitting in the balcony, even the Dada Baker sit down, you know, down there. So I ask you, would you like to come forward closer to me to worship with, with me? And they say, yeah. Next week, I noticed. That's exactly the same thing. They say at the same spot. So I kind of wonder, oh, what's going on? They don't like me? 
grew up together in the same time of the Thigh The Thigh It is time for fishermen. Fisherman time. Fisherman time. So usually, you know, when they are young, they usually go to synagogue together and they school together and we're fishing together. But probably, you know, when they grow up, they have struggles in their lives as a young people who are occupied, the country they occupied by the Roman Empire. Let's not think about people, the Palestinians in Gaza, young people there. Why are they ending up so joining in Hamas? And this is wrong to do against citizens of Israel. But they're frustrated. Maybe they, they wouldn't have any broader future. Maybe they were angry. <laughs> you know, probably the Bible doesn't talk about it for Philip and also Nathaniel. They may experience some frustrations. Maybe they didn't do like the Hamas attack other people. But inside of them, they were struggling and angry against the circumstance they are facing. But one day, Philip talked to his friend, Nathaniel. Oh, Philip, I have good news. I have good news. He looked through the fear. And in an eye, Messiah. He's the son of Joseph from Nazareth. He's a Messiah. He's a Savior. Son of Joseph from Nazareth. Maybe after some of the young people from Hamas, you know, maybe they heard the Gaddis, Gaddis, you know, city. And one day, yeah, there's one general who is a savior who can save us from occupation of from Israel. But here, you know, Nathaniel said, Well, can anything good come from Nazareth? Can anything good come from Nazareth? The Damascus Bible said, Nazareth, you got to be king. That's the expression, you got to be king. Sorry, wizard. Can anything, anything good come from wizard? Yeah, it's like, a, can anything good come from Nazareth? So that's what the expression of the thunder very negative. Because you know the Bible talks about being the Messiah that was born in Bethlehem, not Nazareth. Also, you know, it's the Thyla and the Nazareth were not far, you know, not far from the heart, about five to ten miles. So there's kind of a rivalry there. And a kind of mountain and Halifax. Of course, I'm Come to Halifax, I find a mountain versus Halifax. And I saw the game and the mountain versus Halifax. Oh my goodness, it kind of steamed up. The wind is not. But this kind of rivalry maybe affects Nathaniel's mind. Can any good come from Nazareth? Maybe Nathaniel may have. In a matter. Maybe mm -hmm. people are some kind of prejudice. Old people? 
Can you get anything good from the four Christmas in years? But the parents, you know, even the parents have produce. Philip shared with the news. I have experienced the good news. My heart has regenerated. And I was touching us. All of us here. Can anything good come from us? Can anything good come from us? No. You are not the end. You still have things to contribute to others. When they all gentlemen approached the King Herod, former pastor in New York. Asked, well, I used to be a skeptic in the 80s. Even when I was young, I attended the church. But I do it their way and not believe in Christ at all. But if that can be the uh, your Bible study that session, and when going through hard times, I realized that. You know, maybe God is still with me. <coughs> I still believe God may return. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to explore. Maybe some of your friends or neighbors, maybe because of you, they may have a chance to explore. So the day when they, they said to you, thank you for giving me a chance to explore. You know the song this one? God is so good, hallelujah. God is so good, hallelujah. God is so good. It's so good to me. We sing this wonderful song, God is so good. But sometimes in our lives, it says God is not so good. When you go through hard times, when you lose someone you love, it says that God is not so good. Trusting God is hard. Trusting God is more than feelings, <coughs> more than circumstances. And our circumstances, can we trust them? In my feelings, can I trust God? It is a choice. It is your and my choice to say, I have been in God. Sometimes against my or your feelings or circumstances. Well, so you have two options when your friends have issues and don't believe in God anymore. You can live him or her alone. It's not my business. Or you can start a conversation with your friend or neighbor. Just talk. Just talk. But as we get in order, we tend to preach. And notice that I get, I get in order because my parents I tend to preach to my sons and my friends. But don't preach. And listen to their stories. While you are ending up not believing God. Why has you changed your view? 
Maybe from archives? Like the old old man, old man talking to Tom Carroll? Maybe you know, we all give her a chance for them to explore, to believe God is there. Well, fellow like Dr. Nathaniel, well, I can't wait to finish it. You know me well. I know you well. So, come and see. You know, maybe you come and see how God is good through the Bible, maybe through prayer, through our conversations. To display experience by his To change a person to the living God is not our job, and it's our job. But our job is to let them experience, come, invite them to believe, invite them to explore the God's Our faith is in My mother's mom, she's from a rural area. It's a small town. I still remember back then when I first visited her, her house in no electricity. Imagine no electricity. <coughs> I still remember that. That old rural home. <coughs> started to believe in Christ. And then people in the town believe in God and they get prosper, they got the church, and the town's folks gather to church, worship every Sunday, not only Sunday, every day. Have so you have to sometimes you have to wait to get in. It's in almost two decades, a few two generations have passed. The church has been different. But some of the people who come to church is to believe in God faithfully. And find out, uh, yes, faith is so important that they couldn't give up. And then they could share with others. So, William Barclay, the famous Christ scholar and pastor, said there are two great days in a person's life the day we are born. And then the way we discover why. So I find that out, yes. The day we discover why. When I was 27. That's the most important day of my life. What about you? In your life? The day you discover why you are born. And then you share why with others. That's what the uh, Philip has done to Nathaniel. Come and see. Maybe it's not, it's maybe small, natural. Not going to come, good come from Nazareth. The God said, no. <coughs> it is sheer. Because in Nazareth, it's some word city. Nobody knows about the place. Nobody knows about us. We, we can share the good things, good news that has given us through our lives. And one day, they will be given up. And Jesus Christ may have given up. So, let us pray together what we can do. And then, in the midst of our journey, the church is finished.
but as friends of Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, we can continue our journey to share the good news and this hope. So back to the same number uh, seven, six, seven. I will stick to me and then we are. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, we come to pray to those of others in different places, facing different challenges. Lord, we need your guidance, and your strength, and wisdom to continue, continue to serve. To remember before you for living face to face in the world and violence, Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, and all many different places in the world. Lord, we pray for these children, seniors, women, and the soldiers. Or facing our tough times and how to maneuver these challenges. Lord, give the way to get over these difficult times to find out you are here. We remember for you before struggling in these uncertain economic times, inflations. Housing crisis, homeless issues. Lord, people and families have lost their jobs. The worry about making ends meet. Lord, listen to their cries. Let our leaders find out to solve issues. Also, let's help the people who are crying out. So we pray for our friends, our neighbors, facing illness and suffering in their lives, or in the lives of those they love, those struggling with disability and lack of access for needed resources, and, who, and those who know grief or in love. Teach us to have to care for the people and the world we love, so we may lead together wisely and to share the good news in Christ Jesus. And so joining our voice to Jesus follows around the world, we pray the words he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us out of evil. For that is the power of the Lord. Let's sing our number 634. Will you come?